Hey YouTube, Jeff Coe here. We are going to go through parts today, lots and lots of parts. I have a pile next to me and we're gonna go through them individually and show you many of the components that are gonna be installed in the truck today. So, not today, I'm not installing them today. Things that were gonna be installed over time. I'm gonna show you all of them today. So, uh, follow along, I hope you like it. If you do like it, please like it thumbs up and subscribe and comment and do all those fancy things that people want you to do on YouTube. Really helps me out and lets me know that I need to continue to keep making content for you. So anyway, without further ado, let's dive on in. All right, so number one, the trigger six shooter. This here is for automation. Um, I don't have a good background with electronics or how to control electronics or anything like that. So what I've bought here is a six channel relay control box. This thing runs off a of 12 volts, 24 volts. Um, it also has fuses built into it and it, you can control it via Bluetooth or with manual control buttons. It's got waterproof case and uh, also withstands temps up to 250 degrees. So, which is pretty much everything here that I just listed off. What comes in the box is a pile of stuff, owner's manual, whatnot. These here, this is our switch box. As you can see that is pretty cool. Just toggle switches. I guess I could take it out of the plastic for you, but maybe later. And then this here is the actual trigger control module. Here it is. Pretty cool. One, two, three, four, five, six. All these are for your different positions. It's got these two little antennas, which must get the uh, remote signal sent over to the control box, as well as all the different hookups for your outputs and your hookups for your input. It looks like it uses a big maxi fuse here. And then along with this trigger comes six pre-wired lengths of wire. So you could run these and hook them up to any accessories that you might have, lights, uh, sound equipment, um, pumps, you know, refrigerator, whatever you want to control remote, you can hook to this. Um, I think there is an amperage maximum. Um, it looks like the two biggest ones are going to be 30 amperes, followed by 10s and 25s. So 230s, 210s, and 25s. So you can think of a lot of good things that we could do with this. And that's the Trigger 6 shooter. Next up, C-Flow. 3 gallon per minute pump with accumulator tank. This here is going to be for my water. And the cool thing about this, first off, here's some components that come with it for hooking it up, which we probably won't use. We'll use better quality stuff than that. So here's the actual unit. And this is mounted to a little plastic plate, which is kind of neat. Here is our pump. Here's our accumulator tank. And the thing that I like about this is the fact that it incorporates this accumulator. Um, I'm a home builder by trade and oftentimes with any well system or setup that we normally do, you always have some form of an expansion tank, accumulator tank. Um, it's just kind of standard practice. It leads to less cavitation in the water, um, things like that. So to me, this was pretty important. I thought it'd be really good to keep consistent pressure um, and coming in a nice little package like this where I can just bolt this thing onto the wall. I thought would be really cool. So this guy, I don't remember what this costs, but this is model number SFDP0300453 and uh, that's the pump that's incorporated with it. Again, 12 volt. I think this might be, no, this is just 12 volt, volt 8 amps and uh, 45 PSI max. 
So this is more or less for marine industry. A lot of the stuff that I bought is for marine industry, but this is gonna be what pressurizes our water in the camper for showers, sink, um, hose bib outside, all that stuff. All right, this is a no-co pass-through outlet. For those of you that have never heard of NOCO, I think that's how you say it, N-O-C-O, it's gotta be NOCO. Um, for those of you that don't know about their products, they have a lot of really cool stuff that, um, mostly chargers, trickle chargers, uh, chargers for any voltage, a bunch of cool stuff like that. What I'm gonna use this for is this is a waterproof pass-through device. So it's got this cool little cap on it. And this actually just accepts a standard extension cord plug. And this is really just designed so you can pass an extension cord plug through for like a block heater or something, which would be great for. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this for my shore power because with my batteries and solar and everything, I don't see the need or the desire or the demand to ever really need to hook up to 30 amps or 50 amps for that matter. I think my batteries are a good buffer for that. So not to mention a lot of the times when you're traveling, unless you are stopping at KOAs and whatnot, you're not gonna typically just be able to pull up to your buddy's house and hook up a 30 amp plug or a 50 amp plug. Most people will have to have those wired into their homes specifically for RV use. So I figured, you know, being that most of the time, I think 115 volts is plenty. I don't really have anything in the camper that runs on more than that, including the AC unit. So I think this is gonna be the way that I get my short power. And this will just, uh, of course, have to cut the plug off, but I'll rewire this guy directly into my power inverter and that will um, work together with my battery bank to supply power to the camper. All right, this is my Magnum 3000 watt inverter charger. Um, the reason I went with this over a Victron, which, you know, it, these things are so complex to me, I don't even know if a Victron would be really like a better, a better use for what I'm doing. But the one thing that I noticed with the Magnum Energy inverter was the fact that this will share shore power with your battery bank power to um, combine their forces pretty much to make a higher output. So it's really cool to me that you can take your battery bank and you can take your shore power and between the two of them, you could possibly power something that normally would pop a breaker or blow a fuse um, if you were trying to run it off of one or the other. So I thought that that was really cool. You know, if you got a big air conditioner and just the inverter on the battery bank won't run it, well, plug in the shore power and between the battery bank and the 115 volts of shore power, now we've combined those two, we've got enough power to run, you know, a bigger appliance. Um, microwaves are another thought. So. That's the main reason I bought this. That was the huge selling point to me. Maybe Victrons do it too, but um, I went with the Magnum, mostly because uh, I saw that piece of information and I thought it was really awesome. Victron 241230 DC to DC charger. I picked this up to charge my battery bank using the alternator on my truck. And the reason I went with this one is first of all, Victron, after after I already bought my Magnum charger, I started looking more into Victron stuff. And had I thought a little harder about Victron, I might have gone Victron with everything just to keep all the components from the same manufacturer. But one thing that's really cool about them is the way they label stuff. So this is a 12 or a 24, 1230. So a 24 volt input voltage, 12 volt output voltage, and 30 amps. So we're gonna run this off of the truck's um, 24 volt side because it's relatively robust and I thought that would be a good way to do it. And it's gonna charge our 400 amps of um, Dakota lithium batteries at 30 amps. So DC to DC charger. Next, Victron MPPT 15070. This is our solar controller, our solar charge controller. 
uh, running on 150 volts, 70 amps. And this is going to take all that beautiful energy that we're getting for free from the sun and convert it into usable voltage that can then be stored in our battery bank. So again, went with Victron, um, really like their products. And just to let you know, a lot of the information that I gathered on this Victron equipment can be found. There's a guy with a channel on YouTube called Explorist Life. He is a rock star with all of this electronics. So if you need some really good, extremely detailed, extremely good production style advice, um, look up Explorers Life because those guys are super awesome. And uh, anyway, so MPPT um, Solar Charger by Victron. Should be pretty sweet. All right, this is the Victron Lynx distributor. So this is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It is a place to link all of your power into and distribute it to where it goes. So this will have power coming in from our battery bank and then our higher load items will come directly out of this Lynx distributor. Under this cover is a series of um, fuse locations where you can put, you know, 40 amp, 60 amp, 100 amp, 400 amp, you know, any amperage you need and you can run everything through this Lynx distributor, keeps it really clean, um, looks really professional. And again, I got this idea from Explorers Life. I don't know a ton about this. This is like the solar electrical components of this build are like the most puzzling to me. Like if, if we wanna rebuild the rear end or rebuild the engine, sure, let's do it. The electronics, is where I get confused. So I'm learning a lot about the electronics and um, of course the YouTube community has helped a ton with me figuring that out. But uh, I look forward to getting all this stuff installed and taking you guys with and hopefully doing it right and doing it well the first time. So links distributed by Victron. All right, here's the ARB air compressors twin tank unit. It's got dual tanks, it's got dual motors, and I've heard, I haven't had one, but I've heard that they're, they're pretty good little compressors. What we're gonna use this for is to keep air in the tanks of the truck at all times. So we'll actually plumb this directly into the um, truck tanks that the truck already is equipped with. So that's pretty nice. We've got, you know, I don't know, maybe 10 gallons of air storage there, which we're gonna utilize. And so we're gonna plumb this directly into them. Um, and then what that's gonna allow me to do is pull air out of those tanks for whatever I need. I can run you know, air tools off of it in the field or um, air up a tire, air down tires, which we've already got CTIS, so that's not too much of a concern, but maybe you're helping a buddy out airing up his tires, things like that. And then the, the biggest thing that I want air for is as I progress, I would like to add more air operated um, devices to my truck. And I, I think that uh, Everlanders, their YouTube channel, they are the best at it. Like he's got so many things that are air operated. It's awesome, it's really intriguing. So I wanna get my air system set up, I wanna get it set up right. And then from there I can kind of decide what to do and how to manipulate things to make it work the best. But primarily this is gonna be for airing up tires, things like that, as well as um, potable water. So my potable water will run off of uh, two kegs and 10 gallons of storage and that's how we're gonna um, keep our drinking water running. Next up, Kegco. These are brand new actually. I didn't opt for used ones. These are Kegco, part number KM5GRBT. Um, these are five gallons a piece. They're Pepsi kegs and this is what we're gonna hold our potable water in. They've got these cool, um, nipples on the top that can be plumbed into really any kind of line. And then it's got a relief on the top here. But you can hear a little bit of air come out of there. And then this is how we release them to fill them. So you can see, this is how we're gonna hold our potable water. This system will be separate from all of the rest of the water in the camper. I'll have 84 gallons of water storage in the floor of the camper. I'll have 10 gallons of drinking water. Now these are running a series, 
So we can always add more if we want to, but we're gonna start out with 10 gallons for fresh drinking water. Next up, Planar diesel heater. This guy is going to be our preheat for our truck. So we're gonna run a diesel fuel to it from the main tank. And when it's cold out, we're gonna, we're gonna fire this puppy up and it's gonna preheat the engine for us. So that way, when we're ready to leave, the engine's already warm. And not only that, this will also run through a loop that runs through my fuel tank. So I have a product called an Arctic Fox, which will run down through the fuel tank to keep the fuel from gelling. So this will in turn loop through the engine as well as the hot water heater too. So if you didn't want to run the hot water heater off electric and you preferred to run it off a of diesel, the hot water heater will be in the same loop. So you could turn the diesel heater on and it would heat the fuel if you want it to, the engine if you want it to, or the hot water system if you want it to. And those will all be on valves. So you can take them out of the loop and just heat up whatever specific element you want to heat up. So yeah, planar diesel heater, um, 12 volt, pretty sweet. And this one is primarily for preheating. I have a separate unit that I'll show you next. Next up, Planar diesel air heater. So this guy is gonna be what's gonna be our climate control within our habitat. And it's diesel powered with the help of some 12 volt. And this is gonna keep on a thermostat and thermostatically control the temperature within the cabin of the truck. Um, this is gonna work hand in hand, of course, with our liquid heater. And this is gonna take care of cabin air. That's gonna take care of anything hydronic. So with this guy running and the hydronic heater running, we should be able to run pretty efficiently within the habitat and not um, using too much power. So planar diesel heater, it's pretty sweet. Comes with all kinds of accessories, of course, different ducting and things that you can get. Um, but for, for my use, there'll just be one port coming out from under the bed that'll shoot into the main area. And I think it should be more than enough to keep the cabin warm. Moving on. All right, guys, here's our hot water heater. This little bad boy is made by Kuma. It's a six gallon unit, 120 volts. And the cool thing about it is it has, I don't know if you can see it well, but it has these nipples that run 5 8 heater hose. And that is how we're going to tap our diesel heater into this to be able to heat the domestic water um, anytime we want without having to use 120 volts. So without having to turn on our inverter and without having to fire up our truck. So the other cool thing about these is since they do run in the coolant loop of the truck, they will consistently be making hot water as long as you're driving. So if we drive 100 miles and then camp, as long as you take a shower you know, relatively quickly, I would say within hours of stopping, you should have enough hot water to not have to even use any electricity to make hot water. So this one's relatively small, six gallon, but you know, with the size, it works good for what we're doing. So Kuma hot water heater, again, Marine, bought it from West Marine. Um, looks like it's gonna be a great product. All right, what we have here is a Springfield three-stage table pedestal, which if you remember my previous video, I did not know the technical name for that. That's what it is. Um, here's some part numbers for it. And this thing is solid aluminum, it's very well built. And it's got these three clamps, or two clamps, excuse me, with three um, sections built into it. So this is how my table will sit on top here. And then it'll be in this downward position when it's turned into the sleeping quarters. And then when you wanna convert it to the table, all you do is there's this latch here. Maybe I can turn that to make it a little, maybe not. Pull that and it'll spring up. So there's one stage. And then we've got the other one right here. And there it is. And then you can actually pull this down and lock it into whatever position you desire. So whatever height you want it at, there you go. So with both of them released, you just push it down, 
slams down into place and it's actually kind of got a lot of pressure like i'm having to put quite a bit of weight into it to hold it latch those guys and uh you're good to go this thing's solid cast aluminum very cool really like it all right this is one of my favorite pieces this here is a detroit locker and it's actually not made by detroit it is made by a company um i don't know who it's made by it's made by somebody who is willing to take the time to make lockers for the lmtv community which i thank him for that i'm gonna install this on my rear differential i've got a set of high speed gears waiting for my truck and i've got them on a pallet in the shop and just kind of waiting until this little bad boy showed up which happened about two days ago to go ahead and get the differential lock installed in the rear differential and then get the differentials installed in the truck so with that um i bought this from bryce i think it's bryce and sons military equipment and most of you would be able to find him on facebook if you're in facebook and uh He's a great guy, super awesome. I sent him money, he sent me parts, I did it all on good faith, and he pulled through every time. So, highly recommend uh, dealing with Bryce if you wanna get a locker, or if you need high-speed rear ends, or any kind of parts for your LMTV truck if you have one, and uh, awesome, awesome guy to work with. So, this Detroit locker, we're gonna hopefully get that installed here in the next couple weeks, and then uh, at least have one axle locked. I'd rather have both of them locked, but I don't want a full-time lock on my steer axle. So we'll settle for one and uh, it's gonna be pretty awesome. All right, this is pretty cool. This is made by Rome. And these guys um, build kind of, it's, it's like the best way to describe it is it's a Yeti storage box. Um, it's got the strength and durability of a high-end cooler but it's merely for storing your stuff so you got three clasps on it all lockable and it's on hydraulic shocks and we're going to use this for i'm not really sure yet tool storage possibly um just general provisions things that we need to take along um, I'm gonna mount this more than likely on my roof rack and I will lift it onto my roof rack using my rooftop crane. So we'll crane this onto the roof rack and then uh, load it up once it's already up there. And I don't know if I'm gonna bolt it down or strap it down, but I saw this, I actually found these guys because I was looking at Overland vans, like van life on eBay, and I saw a Sprinter with two of these mounted on the roof and I thought they were awesome. So I looked them up and had to have one. So yeah, Rome Adventure. This one, I don't remember the model number, but they're, they look well built, so. Next, Thetford Toilet. This is a model number C402. This is a cassette toilet. Um, I actually don't know much about it. I just bought the thing kind of unknowing, but I do know that everything goes down the old hole there and into a tank that we can then pull out and dump at any um, reasonable place. So I think it holds water and you can flush it. Judging by this little hurricane thing that's going on there, yeah, that's what's going on. So the thing I like about the cassette is no black tank, no freezing. I wanna be able to go into 40 below weather and be able to have an enjoyable experience. So nothing in this truck is physically gonna be outside of the thermal envelope but I've seen a lot of people use these they seem really great so the Thetford toilet should be a sure win and it also has a cassette here so this is the cassette it's got wheels horse spout and that my friends is how we're gonna get rid of the duty All right, guys, that's it. That's my show and tell. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, like it. I just said like it. Double like it, comment, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time.